The Lady with the Alligator Purse. Today we're gonna to read this book. Now I want you to pay attention to my voice. Is it animated? Is it boring? What's my face doing? Am I expressionless? Am I happy? Do I have a inviting look on my face as I read the book? Now the reason why all of these things are important is because children are watching everything you do and they are picking up on it. And the association that you attach to a book will be something that they will remember. So if you make a big deal about books and you get so excited about books and you can't wait to share books with them, they will pick up on that love of books and they will continue with it as well. Now, what I love about this book as well is the tune that you'll hear as I sing it, as I sing and read the book, is something I actually use often as a tune for piggyback songs. And for the piggyback songs, make sure you check out that resource at the bottom in the resource section. It's a great little guide to writing piggyback songs. And just a quick reminder, basically a piggyback song is taking a tune and changing the words to fit what you're looking for. And my daughter Natia is always using this tune to write all sorts of funny songs. So it's one that she really picked up on and maybe you will too. So here we go. The Lady with the Alligator Purse by Marianne Hoberman and Nadine Bernard Westcott. Here we go. Miss Lucy had a baby. His name was Tiny Tim. She put him in the bathtub to see if he could swim. Now throughout the book, I would suggest stopping and asking things about the story because it really brings it alive. So in this picture, you might say, oh my goodness, where's that little boy? And somebody can point to the boy or you can ask a question about a bath and you know, it might take on a life of itself, but that's okay because getting kids talking is so important for that language building. He drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. Ooh, do you eat soap? No. He tried to eat the bathtub, but it wouldn't go down his throat. Miss Lucy called the doctor. Miss Lucy called the nurse. Miss Lucy called the lady with the alligator purse. In came the doctor. In came the nurse. In came the lady with the alligator purse. Now, as they're starting to get to know the song, I'm gonna to start to leave out some words and we'll see if they can come up with it. Mumps said the doctor, measles said the nurse. Nonsense, said the lady with the alligator purse. Can you say that word? Nonsense. Penicillin said the Castor oil said the pizza, said the lady with the alligator purse. Now at this point, I usually stop and ask the kids what their favorite types of pizza are. It happens pretty quickly. I'll just go boom, 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 and I'll get through as many as want to share. And before you know, we're back in the book. And then the other fun thing I do when I get to this point, when the pizza's all over the bed, is I'll actually go around and let anybody who wants to grab a piece of that pizza and just pop it in their mouth. That's a great way to really foster imagination. Here we go. Out went the doctor, out went the nurse, out went the lady with the, and I want them to sing it with me if they can, alligator purse. And that is the story of the lady with the alligator purse. Now, as they get to know this, when we do it a few times, they're gonna start to be able to actually read it themselves or pretend read it. So place this in the library and watch as kids go over and they may even pretend to be you and sing it maybe to a group of stuffed animals. You see, that's that idea of planting a seed and then they water it using their own way. You're not forcing it. You're letting them see where they take it. Lady with the alligator purse.